Today we begin solving systems of linear equations by algebraic methods. We're going to look at solving systems by using substitution. We began class today with me presenting this graph to my class on the screen and also provided them this note page so that they could look at it together. I asked my students to pair up in their table groups and to try to determine the coordinates of this point, to label the point of intersection and to state the coordinates of the point that represent the solution. So there was some good discussion that went on. A lot of students kind of tried to guess. Some students tried to draw in uh, grid lines onto the graph. Several dropped down vertical and horizontal lines to the x and y axes and used that to determine their values. And so many of them came back with something like 0.8 or 0.9 for the x value, 0 0.24, 0 0.25, or 2 and a third for the y value. And I asked, well, why don't we have one number that everyone can agree on here. It seems like we're kind of all over the place. And what the students told me was that this point was not exactly on one. It wasn't exactly two or three. And we realized that as long as the solution uh, didn't occur right in a grid line of the graph, we really couldn't do any better than guessing. It turns out that graphing is not always the best way to solve a system of linear equations. If a student's graphing skills are poor, for instance, or he just kind of haphazardly throws the two lines together, the point where the lines crest on, on his graph might not represent the actual solution to the system. And as we saw here in this example, if the uh, solution is not integers for x and y values, the coordinates, then we're going to just have to guess. We won't know for certain what the solution is from our graph. So this is the first of many times this year in algebra when we'll be using tools that we've developed to try and solve problems, and we'll find out that the tools we have are no longer good enough, that we need better tools. Fortunately, students have developed some algebra skills that they can use to solve these systems. Our method today is going to be substitution. Students will solve one equation for one variable, perhaps it's already solved for a variable, and substitute that expression back into the other equation and solve for one variable. Once we have a solution, say for x, we can put that x value back into one of the original equations and solve for y and that will give us our solution. So let's look at a couple of examples. This happens to be the system that was displayed on the graph to open up the class. 2x plus y equals 4, y equals 1 half x plus 2. Now the equal sign we've talked about many times in class. It's a very powerful statement. Um, there's nothing wishy-washy about it. It states that whatever is on the left side and whatever is on the right side have exactly the same value, no matter how weird they look. So in this case, 1 half x plus 2 and y have exactly the same value. Now keep in mind this is a system. The same x and y that solved this first equation also solved the second. In particular, whatever this y is, so is this. So we can see that this expression means the same as y. This y is the same as this y. We can substitute in 1 half x plus 2 in place of y in our original equation. So we'll do so. Instead of 2x plus y equals 4, we'll write 2x plus 1 half x plus 2 equals 4. Now we can combine some like terms. 2x plus 1 half x, 2 and a half x plus 2 equals 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. Now I have 2 and 1 half x equals 2. I'm going to rewrite that mixed numbers and improper frac fraction. 5 halves x equals 2 and multiply by 2 fifths on both sides. And I see that x equals 4 fifths. If we go back and check our graph, x equals 4 fifths, 0.8, that's a pretty reasonable number for that x coordinate. Let's move on now. Keeping in mind that the solution to a uh, system of linear equations is going to be an ordered pair, I'm going to open up a pair of parentheses and write my x value, 4 fifths, and a comma. Now we need to go back and get our y. We're going to take the 4 fifths and substitute back into one of our original equations. 2x plus y equals 4. So 2 times 4 fifths plus y equals 4. So I have 8 fifths plus y is 4. We subtract the 8 fifths on both sides. I find that y is 2 and 2 fifths. 12 fifths if you'd rather. And looking back, 2 and 2 fifths, 2.4, pretty reasonable estimate for that value of y.
take a look at another example. What's different between the two equations in problem number two and the equation in problem one? Among the couple of things that stand out, my students notice that neither of these equations was solved for y. Neither one was in slope-intercept form. Well, we pointed out that it would be relatively easy to take the second equation, add 2x on both sides, and rewrite it as y equals 2x plus 4. Now we can substitute in 3x plus 2 times y is the same as 2x plus 4, so instead of 2y, 2 times 2x plus 4 equals 1. 3x plus 4x plus 8 equals 1. Combining like terms, I get 7x plus 8 equals 1. Subtracting 8 from each side, 7x equals negative 7, and x equals negative 1. Now let's go find our y. Parentheses happy there. 3 times negative 1 plus 2y equals 1. So now 2y equals 4 and y equals 2. So my substitution for that system of linear equations, my solution, is negative 1 comma 2. If I look at the second equation, negative 2 times negative 1, that's positive 2, plus 2 equals 4. That checks out. Finally, let's take a look at a word problem. ECA, I-STEP, SAT, ACT, just about every standardized test is going to feature a word problem that's somewhat similar to this, using a system of linear equations to solve it. So we're taking a look at the Henry Ford Museum in Denver, Michigan. 4,400 adults and students admitted on one day for a total revenue of $57,200 in ticket sales. We're also told that the price of admission is $14 for an adult and $10 for a student. But our question is how many adults and how many students were admitted to the museum that day? One well, of my English teacher friends would call this coding text. We're going to take a look at what information in this word problem might be important. A total of 4,400 adults and students attended uh, the museum this day. The museum collected $57,200 in ticket sales, and we also know that admission was $14 for an adult and $10 for a student. Just about every word problem of this type, when we're writing a system, will, will break itself down into two uh, basic patterns of equation. The first one is the total number of items, or in this case tickets, sold. The other is total revenue. So I know my total number of tickets sold was 4,400. What kind of tickets are there? Well, there's adult tickets and there's student tickets. I don't know how many adult tickets or student tickets. That's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to go ahead and write a variable for those. x plus y equals 4,400. So that's one equation. There's only two kinds of tickets. So when I add those two kinds of tickets together, it'll give me my total ticket sales. Now, total revenue. How much money does the museum make selling one adult ticket? $14. How many from two adult tickets? $28. Why? Well, that's 2 times 14. How many from three adult tickets? $42. Why? Well, that's 3 times 14. How about 10 adult tickets? 10 times 14, 140. How about x adult tickets. Well, x times 14, or 14x. I can do the same thing with y. Every student ticket brings $10 in the museum, so 10 times y. So now I have a system of linear equations written, and I can go ahead and solve this. We have multiple methods that we'll learn over time of how to solve. Right now we're working on solving by substitution. So let's use that method. I'm going to solve this original equation. Um, let's say for x. 
x equals 4,400 minus y. So we'll go ahead and substitute in. 14 times 4,400 minus y plus 10y equals 57,200. Fourteen times forty four hundred, sixty one thousand six hundred, minus fourteen y plus ten y fifty seven two. Combining like terms, sixty one six hundred minus fourteen y equals fifty seven thousand two hundred. So when I subtract 61.6 from both sides, I find that 14y equals negative 14y equals negative 4400. Dividing that out, excuse me, that's negative 4y. 4,400 divided by 4 y equals 1,100 1,100 student tickets well how many adult tickets? we sold 4,400 for the day 4,400 minus 1,100 3,300 adult tickets. So this would be our procedure for working out a word problem that requires us to write and solve a system of linear equations. In class tomorrow when we get back together, we'll take a look at solving systems using another method called elimination.